I've tracked down a lot of bizarre insects and spiders. This is a creepy looking beetle, and that is why I absolutely love it. And I've been doing this for a while, but there are still species that manage to evade me. This is something I've been looking for for a very long time. This is a nice brown water scorpion. For the longest time, one insect has succeeded in constantly evading my grasp. But people keep requesting that I feature it here on the channel. There's just one problem. I haven't seen one of these insects in almost 10 years. And I had pretty much no leads until just over a year ago, I found my first clue that these ferocious insects might be lurking nearby. I wanna definitely lift it up carefully. Oh, oh, that is not, that was not a bullfrog, that was a Helgramite. This creature, which looks like it came from some eldritch horror, is affectionately known as a Helgramite. They are voracious aquatic predators, and conveniently, the larvae of what may be the strangest insect in North America, the Dobson fly. These are one of the most fearsome animals in the insect world, and spark horror when they turn up at unsuspecting porch lights. But a visit from one of these creatures could be a good omen. The Dobson fly and its larvae need exceptionally healthy environments to survive. The Dobson fly is what we refer to as an indicator species. What that basically means is this insect serves as kind of a litmus test for the environment. If they're here, you can bet that the environment in this local ecosystem is very healthy. I've found Helgramites here in every phase of their life cycle except adults. There's recently been a local cluster of observations of adult Dobson flies in my area. So this may be my best chance at one of these incredible creatures. If I can catch an adult Dobson fly, I'll have secured a target that I haven't seen in a decade, and I'll establish all life phases of these sensitive and fascinating creatures are alive and well in the local ecosystem. The problem with hunting invertebrates is you've either got very specific microhabitats or you have very general habitats. And with flying insects, they can travel much further than reptiles and amphibians can. So it can be tough to have a given spot to find an insect that can fly large distances. The thing with Dobson flies is I don't know where you'd actually find an adult Dobson fly in habitat. The, the most common place people usually see them is actually at porch lights. Now, if the adults are surviving and living here, uh, my best shot at actually getting them is probably using light to attract them. So basically what we're looking for when I'm trying to set up a light trap is I'm looking for a spot that's relatively open and exposed to good habitat that's also within reach of the house because that's my power source. So having a thought here, this spot right here it's a little bit disturbed, but it's the biggest open area in view of the creek, the large oak trees, and a lot of the large pines on the property. And even this right here, my mom uses this to kind of corral baby chickens in when they are foraging for their first few times before they're actually released to go free range like those guys do. Um, I'm wondering, I could probably just stand that up, put a sheet over that, put my light here, and that should work. The only thing we need now is to wait for nightfall and to see if I'm right. The name of the game with light trapping is patience. The light will do the work and the insects will come, but the best finds don't start moving until after midnight. Oh shoot, I just saw it move, big beetle. Look at this, check this out. This is one of the longhorned wood borers. And this is an absolutely menacing looking one. These beetles are absolutely insane looking. And look at the jaws on this animal. You would not want to take a bite from one of these. It would absolutely tear you up. And with the spines on his thorax, this beetle advertises that it means business. This is one metal insect. And the later it gets, the stranger the insects. Every bit of movement could be something straight out of science fiction. It's fast. It's a beetle. Hold on. Now this is a beetle. It's not one of the longhorns like we've been seeing. This is a one of the metallic tiger beetles. And look at the jaws on that insect. That is one absolutely mental looking creature. Now what's funny is, Tiger beetles 
look menacing, but their bite is actually not that serious. It is a strong little pinch there, but as jagged as those jaws look, they actually can't puncture human skin. And it's definitely not something to be afraid of. Now this is a nocturnal species, but all tiger beetles are predators and they're patrolling the ground looking for ants, cockroaches, termites, a lot of household pests. So seeing a tiger beetle like this is a really good sign that you've got good pest cleanup crew around your house. There's a moth buzzing my phone there. This light trap is insanely busy. And my guess is this tiger beetle is looking to play some cleanup with the insects that hit the tarp and fall onto the ground. They're opportunistic predators. Pretty much anything soft enough that they can actually grab with their jaws and small enough for them to overpower is fair game for food for this tiger beetle. But that is an insane, beautiful little insect. Look at how metallic this creature actually is. That's where it gets its name, the metallic tiger beetle, from that incredible iridescent sheen on its elytra. Absolutely beautiful find. And the night is only just starting. We got a few cool beetles, and lots of small moths showed up, but nothing exceptional. When I looked at the sky, I realized my mistake. You can see the moon back there. That's a little bright for light trapping. Generally, you want to have no more than a half moon. But that is a little bit more than a half moon there. Now, if you ever wondered why insects actually come to porch lights, it's widely thought that a lot of nocturnal flying insects will use stars and the moon as navigation um, after dark. And when there's lots of bright lights in their environment, so it like, almost like hijacks their little insect train of thought and draws them in. So with the moon being this bright tonight, a lot of the more special insects that could have come to my trap probably aren't going to show up. That means I need to wait for either a better moon phase or a cloudy day where there's no moon. That's not the greatest thing because Dobson flies don't live very long as adults. And I don't know exactly when the current generation of Dobson flies emerged. So the clock is really ticking on these insects. Once again, I set up the light trap. It was time to wait. The nightlife of a forest, especially on a moonless night, can be exceptionally bizarre. Katydids, strange beetles, and even incredible moths make their way down from the cover of treetops to interact with the world under the safety of the dark. My hope is that in the twilight of its lifespan, a Dobson fly might be on the move and that the powerful light will draw it in. Look what just flew out of the sheet. That's a katydid. I got him. Katydids in general are some of my absolute favorite insects to find ever. The first insects I was ever catching were grasshoppers and katydids take being a grasshopper to the next level. These guys look so much like leaves, absolutely camouflaged to the max. And if you're a long time follower of the channel, you know that I absolutely love camouflaged animals. I think that cryptic and camouflage creatures are some of the coolest things out there. And this insect right here combines two of my favorite traits of an animal. One, it's cryptic and camouflaged. And two, it's technically a species of grasshopper. This is a very good sign. I left to poke around the woods for a little bit, and on my way back, saw a set of wings fluttering around the trap. I'm coming back from walking in the woods. I saw something big fly down over here. It might have just been a big katydid, but I figured it'd be worth looking. It wasn't that. I see a tulip tree beauty moth. It's not that. It had translucent wings. Wait, is that? Hold on. <gasps> Wait, is that? Oh, it's a female too. Look at that. Next to my hand. There is no mistaking that. That is our Dobson fly. Wow, look at that insect. Look at how menacing. Let's see if I can get it to flare up. Ooh. Oh yeah, they are not friendly. This is a gorgeous female Dobson fly. I'm gonna be very, very delicate here. Because these guys can bite. And you would not believe how hard they can bite. I gotta basically just there. Ooh, 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 yep. He's trying to bite me. Look at that. That that right there is a proper creature 
of the Black Lagoon. Ooh, it almost turned around and bite me there. Luckily, I've got a nice, firm, but gentle grip on her thorax. I do not want to take a bite from this. The males have those big, giant mandibles, and they actually can't bite. They're like stag beetles. They use those for sparring with other males for mates. But and they're fighting over little ladies just like this. And trust me when I say it's the ladies that can give you a wallop. Look at the pinchers on this thing's face. Those, ooh, those are some serious mandibles and make this one of the most fearsome insects at every life stage. One of the most fearsome insects on the planet. But what's insane is these insects are extremely frightening, but they're actually a very pleasant thing to see. And here's why. Helger mites, the larvae of the Dobson fly can only survive in extremely healthy ecosystems, extremely unpolluted waterways with lots of dissolved oxygen. And if she's flying around here, that means she's looking for a place to lay her eggs. As adults, these insects don't live very long, seven to 10 days. So this little lady is at the end of her lifespan. She's trying to bite me and she's about to wrap her legs around. She's trying to bite me real hard. Oh man, and she's musking. It smells like uh, like mothballs or something, almost like a lacewing musk. And it's funny because it used to be thought that these related to lacewings, uh, though they were recently actually put into their own order of Megaloptera. But yeah, this, this female Dobson fly is looking for a place to lay her eggs. And we have a nice creek system about about 100 meters back that way. And uh, it is possible that if she's looking to lay her eggs here, that that creek system is extremely healthy, healthy enough to support the larvae of the Eastern Dobson fly. Now I've seen fish fly larvae out there before, so Helger mites can survive here. But these, these are really proper giant Dobson flies. And in other parts of the country, the Helger mites of this insect can get absolutely massive. Oh man. I have been looking to catch one of these for a long time. I haven't seen a live Dobson fly in almost 10 years. But uh, even with all the climate change and habitat destruction out here, to see this insect out here is a beacon of hope in this trying time. Look at that. You might be frightening, but oh man, are you gorgeous. What a find. After nearly a decade without seeing one of these magnificent creatures, I finally have a Dobson fly in hand. These animals are the key to biodiversity in the local waterways, and that life supports all the other creatures that I feature here on the channel. If you want to see more incredible aquatic creatures, check out this video right here where I dive into the secret world that exists within a woodland stream. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.